12, uh, Thursday, January 2nd, uh, Berlin Select Board meeting to order. With us tonight as uh, Flo Smith, Angelina Joel, uh, Capron is on the phone, and Brad Town with us also is Dana Hadley, Town Administrator, and Diane Isabel, Town Treasurer. And we will start off with having a public hearing, Dana. Yes, this is a public hearing to hear, gather input on the proposed ordinance for the wastewater. Um, that's the ordinance that I've given you um, last, sewer or? last time. Municipal Wastewater Collection System Ordinance, or sewer. I probably put sewer. Um, and basically, this is an update of the existing ordinance that we have. The existing ordinance was approved. July of 2003, and that had been after a lot of revision since it was originally done in the 1980s. Um, much of it is to recognize that rather than a sewer commissioners, you have a public works board that, that oversees. Um, they have added a few things as far as the um, descriptions of things, how they explain them, and it's the same as we had in the other ordinance, maybe worded a little differently, but the same, the same gist. Um, I, I have read through it, basically it's um, talking a little bit more about the control of the public works board over the decisions of the sewer um, workings. And so I don't see anything other than that that's um, a lot different, but it does make it, I suppose, from a legal standpoint, easier to handle the allocations and the um, cost to connect onto the sewer. That was something that's been added into it as well as updating it to the Public Works Board, mm -hmm. the way we are now. Um, so, um, this is a public hearing to gather input. So if anyone has any input, maybe that would be great. Uh, if not, um, the, the Public Works Board is looking for you to approve the ordinance. The ordinance takes 60 days to take effect. There's a 60-day period that people can have a referendum petition. Mm -hmm. Um, and that's basically as much as I can tell you about it. Huh. That, that's interesting. Yeah. So, <laughs> uh, basically we need a motion on this? Yes. I make a motion to approve the ordinance on the public works as presented. I need a second. Uh, okay. Any further discussion? Anything from the viewing public? Um, hearing none, those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Motion passes. And we will now close the public hearing and open and convene the select board. Um, additions or changes to the agenda data? I have a few things I'd like to add. I'd like we received the letter for from the state for the 2019 equalization results. I'd like to add that so we can discuss that. Um, I would also like to Rosemary has given me the a draft warrant warning for the town meeting that I would like to go over with you. I'd like to add that, and I need more signatures on the error and omissions paperwork than just the chairman. Um, so okay. um, I would like to add that and basically I can just ask Flo to sign it and whoever comes in tomorrow. I was going to say everybody was here for that vote. Yes. Yeah, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. they were. And that's all I have. Okay. Okay. Uh, public comment? Hearing none, treasurer's report by you. Okay. I'll then let you know that um, a lot of our residents do pay their taxes through the credit card. And for the year 2019, we had 261 transactions. Now, half of those uh, were for birth certificates, which were like $10. However, uh, we did have $109,450.
that we collected through uh, using the credit cards. So I think that that's a really good thing to have, uh, and people are making good use of it at this point in time. What do they pay for that, Diane? We don't pay anything. We don't what pay is the courtesy that. fee? Uh, it really depends on what you have. If it's um, it goes by the dollar amount. No, not the dollar amount. No. It actually goes if you use an e-check, there's a certain amount. If you use a debit card, it's a certain amount. Uh, and then usually, I think it's like maybe one point five to two percent if you're using a credit card. But a debit card, I think, might be a, uh, like two ninety five, and the e-check, I think, is two ninety five. There's nothing below two ninety five. So that's just a straight fee of two ninety five to use. If you're doing like a debit card, I believe. Yeah. But if you're using a credit card, then it's a, it's could be at least two percent. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. And that's really all I've got at this point. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Diane. Um, approvals of licenses, permits, vouchers, and applications. I make a motion to approve the general fund accounts payable warrant number 20G12 with checks 19861 to 1989 in the amount of $48,233.07. Also, payroll warrant number 20 13 for payroll from December 8, 2019 to December 21, 2019 in the amount of $43,155.14. Your second? Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Uh, motion carries. And we move on to the hazard mitigation plan. That's where Mr. Paul comes in here. Yes, hello. Yeah. Hello, Paul. Hello, um, thank you. Paul had um, well, sent me, bear with me one moment, I'm going to find it. This is the plan, the draft plan. And I think you hopefully you've seen that. It can even come right here if you want. Yeah. Okay. Okay. He also had some tracking points. So the purpose of this, this is a required meeting to review the select, the updated hazards for the town and the uh, named mitigation actions that the town will venture forth in the next five year planning cycle. So they're back in 2011, a lot of towns, you're not the only one, were including some hazards that um, really there's no reason to include those, such as fire and earthquake, and, you know, the risk is too low. It doesn't substantiate any effort to be put into it. So for the update, uh, the proposed uh, updated hazards would be flooding to include fluvial erosion and uh, ice jams. Ice jams, thank you. Uh, severe winter storm. Extreme cold events, based on data, the, the number, the impact of extreme cold is, is on the rise. So, and high winds. High winds is kind of the, you know, that's kind of the if you want for towns, but I did include it because since 2011, the town has sustained a significant amount of damage, the financial. So, um, with the mitigation actions uh, all relevant to the four to the four hazards, um, as with any town in Vermont. You know, making sure your infrastructure is, is solid to flood damage. And it's a, you know, to plowing and things to some extent, but mostly flood damage. And really, when you look at the benchmark is where the town was prior to 2011 in terms of how much money they received to repair infrastructure or had to spend to repair infrastructure. And then the, the two events in 2011 mm -hmm. and where the town is now. And basically, you have two roads to go down. One, 2000, the, the mitigation efforts after the 2011 events worked, seemingly worked for the town. Um, you've been very insulated since then. So um, I worked with the road foreman. There's a couple uh, projects that he mentioned that's included in the plan. You can add or delete at will. Okay, that's not committing you to anything. It's just suggested. Um, also, the second action is to improve resiliency to severe winter storms with action items given in the plan. The, the plan is available for review, for community review, uh, for the next month and a half or so, okay? And the third, uh, reducing the impact of extreme cold, which would be, a lot of that is uh, basically just educational outreach uh, and trying to link people with uh, community-based resources, mm -hmm. if you need. And the fourth is to raise uh, public awareness. One great example is uh, opportunities for a mobile home resident um, to take advantage 
of uh, the UVM program and uh, you know the mitigation efforts state has shown that mobile homes are disproportionately impacted during disasters and that there are uh, specific mitigation actions that, that park owners and mobile home residents can do to help limit that. But I think Weston has, again, Weston's a lot better now than it was in 2008. Sure. So, um, the fifth, uh, you will receive your, they're calling it, the, I call it the road erosion kind of site inventory that's mm -hmm. happening next year. Right. Right. The road permit. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So um, that will help identify some areas in need and then to continue any study of uh, fluvial geomorphology. I love that word. Isn't it great? Yeah. 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 Um, and then <laughs> as a way to make educated decisions about any future mitigation actions. And the six is to improve resiliency to high wind events. And a lot of that is just coordinating with your power companies and doing some outreach to residents and, and community organizations such as the hospital and the airport, obviously. So we have done a lot of I know you've spoken with Tim Davis, and I know you've spoken with um, Mr. Richardson, mm -hmm. and, uh, and, uh, and I know you've spoken with Tom about the FEMA um, aspect, because we've done a lot of things mm -hmm. in the past yep. since I ran. Yes. Um, and, and I think we're in a better place than we were then. Absolutely. Um, and as part of the road permit, we have done a lot of work in the, in the and I can't say the word fluvial, Geomorphology. 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 Sure you can. Uh, yeah. <laughs> However, um, what is there anything that you can think of that we should that we should think about going forward on the go forward? Yes. One thing to make life easier for the next planning cycle, the next time you do an update, mm -hmm. is and it's written in here, FEMA is really oh. wanting you to incorporate mitigation planning into daily operations. Uh, monthly operations, keeping it on your radar. Mm -hmm. And, you know, having a formalized structure where, and I'm not dictating how often it should happen, but there should be time reserved during select board meetings to give a mitigation update. Um, and then annually to track, and I gave you that spreadsheet at the end, that every year for maybe prior to a town meeting, you just run through and you say, hey, we did this, we did that, and, mm -hmm. and, and really have it trackable. And number one, it has to be reported on now, so I had to basically give an update on everything you said you do in 2011, which didn't take a lot of time, but when you look at what the approved plans were prior to 2011, basically a town could get away with a 20-page plan. Mm -hmm. could get away with, but that was, the, that was the standard. Right. Now, that's unheard of. So we have these comprehensive data-driven documents that FEMA is requiring to have an approved plan. And in five years, that may increase even more. Mm -hmm. So it's best just to practice due diligence and, and incorporate mm -hmm. and track. Better data. documentation and those yeah. types mm -hmm. of yeah. things. Ideally, in a, at, at the next five-year planning cycle, Whoever's going to do that update for you, you'd say these are our annual updates for our, for our defined mitigation strategies. And if there's nothing to report, there's nothing to report. Mm -hmm. But it, make, it would make life a bit easier. Mm -hmm. Potential. Right. Potential. I would like to thank Bruce and the emergency management team. They've been very helpful. So thank you. Any questions? So. Um, so Logistics again. Yes. Um, we're going to go forward, and if the board is, you're looking for the board to have a motion to accept this plan. Not yet. Not yet. You're not ready. It you're you're going to finish the draft plan, and we're going to send it off to the. You'll send it to the state. I'll send it to the neighboring communities. I want. I'd like requesting after I make those changes that you suggested. Yes. I'd like you to provide it. You provide copies, allow the neighboring towns to review if they should choose. Sure. Okay. Not necessarily have to send it to them, but let them know that it is available for review and comment. Mm -hmm. um, and then after we do that, um, while it's in state review, I'll just let them know that it's currently in town review process. Okay. And it's potential that a town could have a suggestion that could alter the document. Of course. So once the state has it for review, 
they will do the check boxes. They'll send a review tool that and they'll, okay. if they have any issues, which they normally have a few, I'll make the corrections and then send it back. And once it's ready for submission, the state will send it to FEMA. FEMA will then review it send it back, maybe a couple revisions here and there. And then at the time FEMA then approves it, it's approved pending adoption. Mm -hmm. And that's when it comes back and you guys would have a select board meeting to adopt the plan. Okay, thanks. This must be why we pay you. It's <laughs> an excellent explanation. Thank you very much. Helpful. Okay, okay thanks. You're welcome. Thank you very much. That's it. Okay, well, thank you very much. Well, great. Well, great. Well, great. Well, great. Well, great. Well, great. So I will hear from you, Paul. Yes. No, great. Okay, uh, Central Vermont Medical Center. Are we? Oh, yes, they are in. Yeah. <laughs> I haven't seen Ron yet, so there we go. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I didn't know if he was trying to, you know. You know. <laughs> there just wasn't much of good TVs. No, it's not good. All right, we'll hold on. We'll show them to you. We are. Um, we have two members here. You know, Brad Town is the chair. Hello. Uh, Hi. Flo Smith is a board member, and Angelina Capron is on the telephone. Um, and the other two are unfortunately not here, so thanks for bearing with us. Uh, so I'll start out. I'm Jim Albert, I'm the Vice President of Support Services for Central Vermont Medical Center. Uh, thank you for allowing us time on your agenda this evening. Um, you being here. The uh, genesis of, for the project you're about to see came from a request from the Green Mountain Care Board back in the spring of 2018 that UBM Medical Center spend uh, $21 million uh, on, and we get the quote here, uh, a measurably increasing inpatient mental health capacity in Vermont. Um, so from that request, uh, the network planning team spent about a year running analytics and working with stakeholders about what that would look like. Um, the focus really became um, by increasing access to inpatient care, you get a twofold impact. Um, first being the um, patients that need psychiatric uh, uh, inpatient care are being boarded in EDs waiting for a bed to open in the last two days. And so you you um, address that issue of the boarding in the ED, um, which, you know, for the patient, it's, it's, um, it's not an acceptable standard of care. If it was a medical patient to wait for days to get to an inpatient bed, I mean, it, it, you, it would be unheard of. And so, the, the I'm fact sorry, that Jim. Is ED emergency? Yes. I'm emergency. sorry. Okay. Yeah. All right. So, yeah. anytime yeah. I yeah. 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 It sounded like a disease. So. Yeah, yeah. 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 <laughs> emergency department, yes. And so, um, yeah, the goal is we want to get them out of the emergency department into a place that they can get the proper care. Um, the, the second uh, benefit you get by addressing this is that it um, it deals with the um, the flow of the ED because when you're boarding patients waiting for beds you're taking exam rooms out of service you actually need for daily flow of seeing other patients and so when you have an ED like Center of Vermont that has you know 21 exam rooms and you've got three of them taken by uh, mental health patients that are waiting for a bed you've, you've taken a percentage of your capacity to see all patients. And so um, so that, that became the, the focus is, is increasing this, this inpatient capacity on clogs, not just um, such Vermont's ED, but how does it affect EDs across the state? So that's the analytics that really the, the network had ran over the past year. And so the magic number they came up with was 25 beds. So if we add 25 beds to the system, then that um, allows for patients to wait no more than eight hours in an ED 80% of the time. You're certainly gonna have peaks because you can't you know, build everything, and so, but at least we're dealing with the majority of it. It does not address um, geriatric set care or um, uh, child set care, really, so under, under 12. Um, those are still gonna be issues for the state to deal with. Um, 
Central Vermont was chosen for this expansion because it's central in the state and uh, there's capacity on a campus to build. Um, so the goal is then to, if we add 25 beds to Central Vermont and we have 15 there, we're really looking at a 40 bed um, psychiatric solution on the campus. Uh, in that, we had to work that into what is the master plan for the hospital in the long term uh, and how would it affect that. So the, the, the concept at USC at night is, deals with the 40 uh, inpatient psych beds plus the replacement ED. Um, and because of the building replacement, we're now looking at what is the main interest of the hospital, how does parking happen on the campus, and, and um, what's the traffic pattern through. Some of the stuff still being worked through, but that's basically the scope of the project. So if you guys want to start getting into the, the fun part. <laughs> sure. I mean, I can give you an overview of where we are. And, uh, I'm Eileen Lee. I'm the project and property manager at CVMC. And I don't know where the best place to put this is. So that, oh, Ron, you're going to be Vanna. <laughs> I love it. Um, okay, so this is the entrance you all probably utilize to access CBMC. Over here is the access to the emergency, the existing emergency department. So we studied an a number, probably five sites on the campus to see where we could fit this. And this is where we ended up. Right here is the current main entrance to the building. So what we have here is a ground floor with the emergency department and then two stories of inpatient psychiatry above that with a shelled floor above that for mechanical. And so that rests right here. We're right now where we are in the design, we're partway through the schematic design phase, which is the first real phase of work. And um, this would be a new access point and a new primary entry from this rear parking lot. Because the, what happened when, when this building went here, in theory, we lost a lot of our patient and visitor parking. And also there's no real way to access the main lobby from here. So the concept is to have the primary patient parking in the rear, a potential parking structure here. And we've been working, Ron's been working on a, on a variety of parking studies and parking counts for us to really determine what we need. And if it is a two-story structure, there would be a pedestrian bridge that goes across to access like that the main hospital. Mm -hmm. Is the access still at the same intersection? You just drive yeah. around the corner? Yeah. Exactly, yeah. 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 And then the ambulance access comes in right through mm -hmm. to its own little zone Place, back yeah. here mm -hmm. with first responder parking. One thing that's been interesting about the site that you don't realize until you get this deep into is that the hospital drive is actually nine feet lower than the entrance of the building. So as you push the building out, you got to deal with that nine feet. Yeah, that's and so that's, that's been an interesting Ron's task. Ron's been playing with that. <laughs> yeah, that's exactly. <laughs> Moving yeah. dirt around. Yeah. <laughs> We're actually doing some, some improvements to this roadway, adding a lane, right turn lane now, and it's really cut off by the mm -hmm. queuing traffic. Look at it queuing really closely in a traffic study to be sure that we got good circulation, good access, and uh, good functioning in the intersection. So this will be improved somewhat to make it more of a major entry as opposed to uh, since you're coming down uh, what's going to be behind the hospital at this point. But, uh, and then there's a relocation of the helipad, which is currently down here in this area, uh, and we get a. I think we got 150, we had 150 helicopter yeah. visits this past year. So having that close enough to the emergency department where you can wheel a stretcher over as opposed to moving patients into a ambulance and driving them around. Well, that was part of the grading here too, just to be sure that we have a 2 or 3% grade or not a 10% grade down. So that crossing yeah. is on the driveway. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Drive level. Generally, the, the overall project from an engineering standpoint, site engineering works really well. Uh, we're basically putting 
putting an addition on the existing building. We're eliminating some parking, obviously, in the main entry here, but saving quite a bit for the emergency room and the emergency uh, uh, ambulances over here. And so we've saved quite a bit, a little parking down here, the, where the existing helipad is. And this new uh, helipad up here still can have most of the parking for building C. So it really balances out pretty well. And that's where we really are studying it closely. And CBMC has looked very closely at parking on this site just to be sure it works. Um, I mean, it looks to me like the parking lot where it is now is always busy. It's <laughs> always yeah. busy. And so I'm just, I know you're aware of that. So. Yeah. How it utilizes that lower parking lot in the back of the building? Now. This 95% full on pretty much all day. This is the primary staff parking area. And how many parking lots are you giving up on the upper part? About a hundred, about a hundred in this area. Yep. And how many parking spots in the lower one all together? Uh, let's see, without the, uh, without the parking garage, or what it looks like now is we're actually going to gain on the site somewhere around a hundred total. If you add this in, uh, the parking garage, and then this area here, and then there's some potential for some restriping in areas to pick up parking so places. So part of the plan is that the, the lower parking lot is going to be a garage, a two floor, or three floor. Back here, yeah. 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 I mean, what we're really, we're getting into right now is seeing who parks where yeah. and how many of those people mm -hmm. do we have mm -hmm. and need spaces for and what that proximity is to where. Because when the emergency department's not over here anymore, who are these people? Parking here, you know, we don't know yeah. yet. We have to. That's part of the ongoing conversation. Do you know what's going to be where the emergency room is now? Yeah. Uh, well, so <laughs> a couple things. There's one short term, we'll probably use it for physician offices, specifically for specialists that are on the campus themselves that mm -hmm. have some yeah. relationship to the daily inpatient care. Um, long term, we need to have a plan that tears the old building down because it's it's past this useful life. We're right now doing a study about what it's going to take to seal the building back up and get a few more years out of it, but it really it's built in the late 60s and you know it's got 50 years on it and it's at that point. So the long-term master facility plan was okay as we build new buildings we will tear down the old ones and then we basically end up with the new modern medical center. Um, this is kind of that first floor plate because mm -hmm. it's extremely expensive to build a hospital so we're, we got to buy it off in little chunks and so um, short term, we'll probably repurpose it for some kind of uh, outpatient offices, but long term, it's got to start coming down and so mm -hmm. uh, to make room for whatever the next phase is. And my selfish question is will it impact a change in the intersection? Uh, we're doing a traffic study or have done a traffic study, and the implication on this is pretty minimal compared to. Okay. You know, when you did the work, when was it? Two or three years ago, and the line was put. Far back, there was a lot of problems right. with getting that when the shift changes, getting people out of the hospital driveway. Mm -hmm. um, we have replaced those traffic lights, um, which I think helps. Yeah, um, yeah. Um, so that was. So I just, you know, yeah. I'd like to work with you on that if mm -hmm. you can think of. Well, I think you get rid of that artificial constraint. Yeah, the, left turn, having, the right turn lane mm -hmm. helps too because the yeah. thing bumps out, so you only get so right. many cars queued up. You'll be able so. to get people yeah. by that way. Yeah. Yeah, that's something we looked at very closely because the worst case scenario is we end up with a problem of traffic coming yep. mm -hmm. to from the yeah. facility. And the roads, the good news is the road system is really good in this area. You know, it's got the interstate, mm -hmm. lots of work down in the 62 um, Fisher Road intersection by, by the state mm -hmm. two years ago, and that's yep. kind of a high end. And this, uh, this intersection was last year last year we yeah. replaced that so, yeah so, so all together it's, uh, it's well, a good money system. amongst friends yeah <laughs> <laughs> when, when this building is built what's going to be the net increase in employees that's being studied right now I guess the range is 90 to 110 mm -hmm. would be a guess right now yeah. or we won't know for a little bit longer but um 
we're basically going department by department, kind of forecasting yeah. what that is, and we have. To I just wonder how it's going to affect those yeah. intersections. Yeah. 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 Well, and that's over the course the of 24 the twenty-four hours. hour yeah. period, yeah. so it's not all at once. Three shifts. Yeah. Yeah. So that building is handling um, potential psychiatric patients. Mm -hmm. Is yes. that, is that yeah. what I'm hearing? Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And here's just another, this visual might help fill it in a little from the, so this, um, right here is the existing mm -hmm. main front entry, and so there's the new emergency department with the two stories of psych, psychiatric care, and the shell space, and then here's that connector going through to the back. If you were to park at this side of the building? Mm -hmm. Is that what you're saying? You haven't really decided how you get in the building that way? Well, no, we are really, they will be, the majority of people will be coming in from this back entrance. Yeah. Unless right. they're going to the emergency department. Right. And we will maintain this front area. It's it's underutilized, but it is where bus yes. drop off yeah. is. And that will remain. Isn't that also the entrance for the dialysis people? Yes, yeah. it is. And you're, you haven't gone to the DRB yet. This is. That's correct. We did. We had a meeting mm. with Tom, a preliminary meeting, yeah, okay. and that yeah. was. We're in the early stages. Yeah, you're actually, you're actually okay. seeing. Um, as much or maybe a little more than the only the network meter chip has seen because right. you see this in the 14th and so you can get a preview of the conversation perhaps. Well, I'm, I'm sure the board appreciates you coming in to give, yeah. Yeah. give that from us. That's, yeah. uh, I'm just trying yeah. to understand where the, yeah. when is this going to be done? Oh. If all goes well. Well, it, well, I'll be up to, first we got to submit a CON. We're hoping to do that late spring, early summer. CON. Certificate of need with the Green Mountain Care Board. Yeah. And then um, they have you know their process to approve it, mm -hmm. um, so that that can take um, you know ninety days to a year. So right. uh, once that once that approval happens, assuming it does, then it's about thirty six months of construction. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, the big hurdle is, is how to pay for it still. So it's a, it's a, it's a big, very expensive building, and so mm -hmm. that's that's the challenge of the moment so, right so yeah. and that's where we're working trying to get an accurate cost so that yeah. we can figure mm -hmm. then figure out mm -hmm. how much money needs sure. to come forward yeah and it would have to go through like 215 yeah. mm -hmm. conditional yeah. use yeah. of the town yeah. and, and uh, site plan approval and actually we'll have to talk about water and wastewater these wastewater allocations Minimum amount. Well, we're from the government. We're here to help you. <laughs> <laughs> you know that. <laughs> the hospital does a really good job with community outreach and educational opportunities too, mm -hmm. and that's something to potentially, you know, look at in terms of um, obtaining additional funding and perhaps grants, etc., yeah. mm -hmm. or capital funding. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I think about like the change in the parking, you know, maybe there could be a designated area for, you know, folks that are there for educational yeah. opportunities too. Mm -hmm. It's a thought. Mm -hmm. With educational opportunities up at the campus now, I know just tremendous. Yeah. Find, yeah. Find mm -hmm. things in there you want to go to. Exciting project. It is yeah. very yeah. exciting. Yeah. 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 Well, as you say, too, in terms of how it relates to the uh, town square, which is, you know, I think it's exciting the two things come together. And so, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, that's a really good point with the town yeah. center zone. Yeah. It's, it's kind of leaning towards this. Yeah. I think the parking garage is a really great, um, not only design to have it, but where you're looking to put it. Yeah. It just makes total sense. Yeah. Oh, yeah, that does kind of tuck away in the back yeah. side mm -hmm. there. Mm -hmm. Yeah. What the hell? Mm -hmm. I don't know whether there's looking at just the the hospital's plans for the future that the building would be built for the addition if, if it was reasonable to put on additional stories. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So so as this becomes the, the kind of the main plate of 
the future hospital for the next 50 years, there may it may stack right. two, three floors higher, mm -hmm. depending on what the needs is, and we'll move mm -hmm. all of our inpatient medical beds there too, and mm -hmm. and uh, basically the community ends up with you know the next hospital for the next 50 years. Mm -hmm. So, so this application is just for the emergency department yeah. and the psychiatric, uh, but it's really great planning because if you look at a map. And look at what we have for development of the land up here. It gets pretty minimal unless you start to yeah. look at 10 years from now, maybe those, uh, those floors have to go up. Mm -hmm. And we, we own those three other lots there, and and it's hard to push things that direction because so far people to travel. Mm -hmm. So we're actually looking at how does that play into an ambulatory strategy so is that where some of our doctor's offices are. Mm -hmm. And so basically it's mm -hmm. destination on that side of the campus. And so we'll see. And kind of the 15 year master plan, how does it all play out? So, I think a little subway would be nice, eh, John? Yeah, a tunnel. We're on yeah. track to give us a tunnel. I can notice. We consider the hospital very important in yeah. the plan for the downtown designation, yeah. Yeah. as yeah. we've talked mm -hmm. about. Yeah. So, mm -hmm. um, I was at the, uh, at the um, uh, Act 250 meeting for the, the, the senior center going in. And there's a lot of conversation about the, the walkability, and so that was my interest because as the town center plan develops, we want to make sure that there's walkability between the hospital and the town center, and so, so it's and like you are with yeah. your project, this project, when there's a lot of unknowns, we don't yeah. have the answers. Yeah, to yeah, that. yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Well, you know, one of the things we want to plan for is as we build this, is that we've kind of built in that future walkability right. too. So. Right. Sure. It's going to be an exciting few tough yeah. years in the life of the town, I think. Oh, yeah. The town center and housing. And Maybe my son can wheel people. me back. <laughs> That's not really walkability. Yeah. <laughs> wheelability. <Yeah. coughs> Any other questions? Yeah. Thank, Thank you very much for coming Excellent in. Excellent presentation. Thank, Thank you all yeah. very Thanks. much. Good to see you. Good to see you. Yeah. 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 Nice, nice to meet you. you. I'm sure nice I will see you. Thank yeah. you all. Thank you, Ron. Thank you. Do you have to say hello? Hello. Such nice weather. It's going to be freezing up going back out. I know. Right. <laughs> Take, Take care. care. Thank you. Thank you. Linda, come on up. Come on up. Be our next contestant. <laughs> <laughs> Did you want to talk in for that um, audit? Yes, please. Thank you. Um, did you get the word from Brian that he's going to take care of that tomorrow? Nope, not yet. I just saw the email uh, when I went to check something else about 10 minutes ago. He no. had an email in there saying, and I think he sent it to you with a copy to me. Oh, okay, but maybe good. it was the other way around. But okay. he said he was going to take care of that. Okay, yeah. good. Yeah, I followed up with you. I saw it. Right. Yeah. Say, you know, yeah. Fax would we be need great. it quick. Yeah, yeah, fax will save about four days of mail time. So. Yeah. 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 Did anybody have any questions on the audit before I start? Because yeah. what I do is I went through it briefly at the last meeting. Oh, okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. And I knew, and I just picked uh, one particular section. I think it was G. That I had picked, yep. uh, and I knew that you would just touch on all the other ones just to say what each one actually means. Yep. Okay. G was one of my sections too. Okay, yeah. Good. <laughs> <laughs> um, I usually just gloss over Exhibit A and B, and that's basically taking a governmental fund statement, which is the reports that you guys look at every month that Diane gives you, mm -hmm. and basically converts it to like a for profit for-profit business out there, which is getting all the loans on there and getting all the fixed assets on there. But I know that's not what you guys use for budgeting purposes and setting the tax rate and all that. So we'll jump to page 12. And this is basically the balance sheet which shows the general fund separate because that's really the only major fund you guys have. The rest of the other seven funds are all combined into the non-major funds. Um, but for the general fund, you ended up the year with $1.2 million of fund balance. Some of that isn't spendable because it's prepaid in inventory and the loan to uh, one of the proprietary funds. And then there's restricted money, committed money, and assigned money. Um, you know, like committed, um, 
restricted money being the reappraisal money that comes in and stuff and those are all noted on page 39 so that equates to about five hundred thousand dollars between the between all of those so what's left is a unassigned fund balance of six hundred and three thousand dollars that's what you can use to decrease the tax rate if you want mm -hmm. to if you want to use it going forward mm -hmm. um, so that's pretty much where you stood at the end of June for last year. Lynn, but do you know what they recommend from the state to hold for a fund balance? I, it that's used to a be very a, good question. something like a percentage of your budget. I thought it was like 5% of the budget. Or something. Um, I do not know what the state recommends. I know some places might have a minimum fund balance where they say we want to have, you know, 15% of whatever our annual budget is. We want to have that as a minimum fund balance just mm -hmm. to keep it. Yeah. Kind of in our back pocket, so to speak. Well, it's, it's you know, if we had a major disaster, for example. Um, right. You know, that we had no choice. We right. Had to, yeah, I don't know what the state does, but I you know, like, some non-profits, like, I was curious if you know, I don't either, yeah. like, that, who depend a lot on, you know, donation stuff. Sometimes they'll say a year's worth of operating expenses because timing of non-profit grants is so fluctuating. Mm -hmm. but, I don't know what to say. Oh, okay. Oh, um, but a good question. Well. <laughs> um, exhibit E is basically your income and expense for the year, showing the general fund as one um, that showed 140,000, basically a net profit for the year, which gets you down to the the total ending of 1.2 million. And the other combined funds um, had a net loss of about 50000 but really that's because 62000 of that was transferred into the general fund. Um, that was the bridge fund, the Rex and Park fund, and the roads project fund that you closed out and moved in. Those are those reserves that, you, that we decided yeah. to, yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So really, of that, you know, 61000 is part of that. 140 so mm -hmm. okay and then exhibit G basically takes the general fund budget to actual for the year so your revenue was over budget by four hundred and almost twenty eight thousand um, dollars most of that being from the state you know the Mirror Lake Road culvert and the Fisher Road yep. paving grant mm -hmm. and then you also had insurance proceeds from some highway vehicle 52,000. So that really comes up with most of your mm -hmm. excess revenue. Mm -hmm. Your expenditures were over budget by $305,000. Um, Under of that had to do with capital outlays, mostly for the highway, those highway right. projects. Right. And then there was, you know, some of that was highway funds, you know, for um, like winter roads, um, other small highway things that totaled up. Because um, we, we had in that in that figure, we had those two pieces of equipment that we purchased that we hadn't planned for. That's in the capital portion. Yeah, okay, yes. yeah. 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 And then the police department was over budget by 76,000. Um, a lot of that was due to wages. Um, so some contributing factors to what that 305 was for. Mm -hmm. um, so overall, you had budgeted a deficit of almost 44,000. You ended up with 140 excess. So you were really better than budget by almost $184,000. So. Thanks for the good. revenues. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. Overall. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. 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 And then over on page 23 shows your two proprietary funds, your water pollution fund and your water division fund, both with about ending what they call net position versus net fund balance um, of $1.7 million. Uh, the water pollution fund on the next page ended the year with an excess of 168000 The water division had a deficit of 100000 um, the prior year for the water division fund, there was actually 50000 of income from that forgiven planning loan. So it was quite a shift from the year before. Um, but, but overall, for both of them, you ended up with almost a $68,000 profit. 
So, and the the other non-major funds is way in the back, and it shows the detail of each of those little funds. But those are minor, minor accounts. Cemetery fund. And oh, right, the the new asset forfeiture fund that was new this year. Yes. Yeah. Right. Yep. Um, again, on page thirty-nine, there is the detail of what's what is the committed, the restricted, and the assigned fund balance. So you can see what all of those funds consist of. You know, I know the state gave you some money for I-89 closure that's coming up. Mm -hmm. You know, so that's part of that because it mm -hmm. hasn't been spent. Um, you know, records restoration from the state. <laughs> and that's pretty much it. We didn't have any findings this year. Which is good. There's a couple journal entries, but nothing, nothing material that was a result of audit procedures. So that was good. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, that is good. It is good. Yeah. It's excellent. A lot of attention to detail here. I like that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, we're very lucky we have Diane. We are. Mm -hmm. We commend her. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Very much appreciated. So we're looking for the board to accept this. Yes. Mm -hmm. Or yeah, I know are we at that for something? Yeah. Just whenever you guys are ready, and I did bring another copy of the rep letter that needs to get signed. So okay. whenever you're ready. Okay. What is it when you need that back? Whenever you guys want it. I mean, it's in your hands right now with the draft. So whenever you approve it, we just need a verbal approval or written something, and then this. Rep letter needs to be signed on the back, basically saying, you know, you provide all the information to us mm -hmm. and you accept the draft as yes. is, mm -hmm. et cetera. Is that the one? Is that signed by Diane and me? Is that mm -hmm. the one? Mm -hmm. um, we need this by the end of the month for the town report, so we right. can include it in the town report. Okay. Um, perhaps since we don't have a full mm -hmm. contingent of people, maybe you could accept it at your next meeting. Or we could do it tonight if you feel confident in what has been presented to us. I'm all set. I mean, mm -hmm. yeah, because we did it before board when I went through everything mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. last time. I'm thinking, you know, I, I'm willing to make the motion to go ahead and prove it That's tonight. Great. So I make the motion to approve the um, FY19 audit, the review that we just um, did tonight, and presented by Linda Mullen from Father Gill Sagalian Valley. You'll hear a second? I'll second. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion carries. So Diane and I will sign that letter. I'll leave it with you and you can just fax it back. When okay. Your All right. Meeting. Very good. And so we'll do that tomorrow. Yep. And you you should be getting the other item that you're looking for from the lawyers. Okay. The lawyer letter. Okay. And after that, and then it just takes. You would just let Diane know when it's ready. Right. Yep. Yeah. 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 We'll probably upload it. it to the portal. Yeah. And then you have a copy. And do you need hard copies or? We do. What we usually get what ten. I think we usually get ten. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So we do want ten. And we get the and you probably have this all figured out the electronic one so Corinne can put it in the report. Right. Yeah, we do need that. Yeah, yeah. that's you can get yeah, that, that portal. Yeah, that's why. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That is what I they don't allow me to use the portal, so it's. Let me use it much either. <laughs> okay. Okay. Thanks, Are you all set? Thank you, Linda. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you very much. Good to see you. Yeah, you too. Okay. Approval of select board minutes. I make a motion that we approve the select board minutes for both December 5th, 2019 and December 19th, 2019 as presented in our packet. Is everybody here? Those two meetings? Um, the last two, yeah. They were, yes. Yes. The full board, okay. The full board. we here a second. I'll um, Any further discussion? Hearing none, those in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion carries. Um, Mr. report, David. Um, well, 
I guess my report is basically we've talked a little bit about the um, the wall incident with the with the highway truck. Um, we did get a new highway truck today. They went down and picked it up. Uh, the last couple weeks have been kind of odd with the holidays, but we're back on um, getting back to normal, which is always nice. It's nice to go on holiday and it's nice to come back. So. Mm -hmm. um, the budget you've talked about a little bit tonight, that's coming up. The warning we're going to talk about, and um, we have to um, get the warning ready to post it by the end of the month. And if people are running for office, it's July 25. They have to have their petition into the clerk. July? January. I'm sorry, did I say July? <laughs> January. January. Yeah. January. Yeah. <laughs> Where am I? Yeah. <laughs> January 25th. You're just going to warmer weather. Yeah, I know it. <laughs> and anything else? No. Your equity, your uh, 2019 um, level of appraisal? Oh, thank you. Yes. We did get the letter from the state on the equalization study. And I am going to find it at any moment here. We have the um, the common level of appraisals this year is 10309, which is so we're still over 100. percent You know, that's we were 10452. That's the the common level of appraisal. Mm -hmm. um, the coefficient of dispersion, the COD, was 13.2. Um, I did have some questions. I haven't had a chance to talk to Clarissa about, I wanted to see, since we just had the mobile homes, the unlanded mobile homes redone, of what that did to our, mm -hmm. our COD. Um, but I wanted to, the, it hasn't changed very much from what it was last year, which doesn't indicate any need to do any major. reappraisal or major work. But I will have some, an answer on the some of the individual um, sections of the total town. The mobile homes that are unlanded, the mobile homes that are landed, those are our most difficult ones to mm -hmm. keep a hold of with the sales and so forth. And a lot of it, um, and still, was from the incident in 2011 from Irene with homes that mm -hmm. people were replacing homes finally and they were paying a lot more than what Okay, yeah. we're able to get so um, so that is in and um, nothing a surprise there mm -hmm. the draft the warning and the warning and I'll give you um, this is obviously just a draft at this point it doesn't require you to accept it at this point um, Rosemary has typed this up and the Special appropriations, everyone that she has um, received are in, um, are not bolded. These are the ones that were on last year's and the ones that are bolded she hasn't heard from yet, although she has until the 16th which is to hear from them. And the pre-town meeting is going to be on the previous pre-town meeting this year. instead of the Monday evening. It will be on the Saturday morning at at and I notice she has to change that. It's ten a.m. Um, okay. Mm -hmm. uh, Saturday morning. And that's really um, because the school is going to be having theirs on Monday night, and it's the district school. It's not our school now, right. so it's different. So much better. Yes. Uh, again, uh, people have until the 16th to present a petition either for this or something else for the warning. Um, the articles that are going to be on the floor are um, the normal articles as far as the date that taxes are due and the penalty and the interest. Uh, this year, um, according to the Vermont state law, 
entities such as the volunteer fire department um, that do not pay taxes and are not town owned have to be approved by the town for tax exemption. So that's more or less a housekeeping thing. The Grange would be next year. That's, that's one, that, but it's five years. Mm -hmm. um, we, uh, also, the annual town meeting, it's been suggested that we move that from the first Tuesday, which is voting would still be the Tuesday, but the actual meeting to um, the Saturday before the first Tuesday. And so I don't know what the board feels about that. That was a suggestion of Rosemary. So we need to talk about that a little more. So this year around, you know, they're talking about moving the, she wants to move the, the voting part, of, or not the voting part, but the town meeting part to. She, she can't move the voting. Yeah, that's because of Vermont state law. That's always the first Tuesday of the month. Yep. She's talking about moving the actual meeting part where you discuss different items. And I think what the theory is in so that people have a chance to discuss what's on the ballot before they... Many times now, people yep. have already voted by the time it gets discussed. And I think what she's trying to do... And what our thought is, is that people would have a chance to discuss it before they, so, can, they can make a decision how they want to vote. It'll be interesting to see what the pre-town meeting attendance is this time around, because it's not going to be the Monday before, it's going to be on the Saturday. Yeah, I, I don't know. You know, I've had people say to me, you know, if you had it on a Saturday, we could attend. Um, but no matter when you have that... Unfortunately, we all have times that we can't go. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and, and that's kind of the same idea with the Tuesday meeting. Um, people, even though employers are supposed to let employees go to town meeting, um, that's mm -hmm. not always the case. Right. You know. Anything else, Dennis? And that's, that's the only thing for the... So I guess I, you know, we would, uh, after... Next Thursday, which is not in July, um, we'll be, Rosemary will have all the petitions. If there's any petition, potential for more petitions, she'll have them. Yeah. And she can have them on there. So it'll be ready for you to vote on next, next time. And also, um, as far as the annual meeting, if the board is going to support moving the date. So that's all that. And that's when did we decide that we would switch to the Monday meeting? That, what data is that happening? Um, that was because the clerk has to be at both meetings. Mm -hmm. And she can't physically be at the school meeting and, mm -hmm. and at the town meeting right. at the same time. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So we decided, mm -hmm. we being Rosemary and I, that we'd go with the Saturday before. Very yeah. Good. yeah. <laughs> Anything else to add That's that? all. Yeah. That's it. Um, let's see here. All I had was I just needed, since I have flow, if I could have flow signed underneath Brad. Sure. And the other thing will be, so we move on now to round table. Flo? Nothing tonight from me to round table. Thank you. Angelina? Okay. Stating tonight is fine? Fine. No executive session? No. Yeah. I make a motion to um, conclude and adjourn the meeting for this evening. Do hear a second? Second. All those in favor? Aye. <laughs> Those opposed, motion carries, we're adjourned.